Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom Israel, Mosai and Christ Blessed. My name is Captain Mattathias. And I'm Officer Losias. All right, we're back with another 15 minutes with the captains. All right, today's topic is how to train your dragon. All right, how to train your dragon. What is that going into? You brothers know a lot of y'all got dragons at the house right now. All right, so all praises for this topic. We're going to teach you how to train that dragon that you have at your house, okay? Read that. Uh, uh, give me the book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 16. Come on. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, and verse 16. Uh-huh. I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon. Than a what? A dragon. Come on. Than to keep house with a wicked woman. You see that thing? A lion or a dragon. It's talking about those wicked, loud mouth sisters out there who do not want to humble down to their husbands, okay? Give me Sirach 25 and 23. Verse 23, mm -hmm. a wicked woman abateth the courage. Because you will suck a man dry. You will take out everything that man has inside of him by your wickedness to the point he don't want to come home, mm. to the point now he don't want to do anything. All he want to do, all he can do is come back home and listen to your loud mouth. Dang. I'm going to read it again. Read that again for us. Read it again. A wicked woman abateth the courage. Come on. Make it a heavy countenance. Make it a what? A heavy countenance. Hey, bro, how you feeling? I'm all right. Say, what's going on, bro? Uh, things have changed since I got married. He said, wow, I, I thought you were supposed to be happy. Right. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Read it again. Read it again. A wicked woman abateth the courage. Uh -huh. Make it a heavy countenance. Make it a heavy countenance. And a wounded heart. And a wounded heart. Is that it on that? A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress uh -huh. maketh weak hands and feeble knees. You see that? The sister or the woman, her role is to be a what? A help me and a comfort to her husband. All right? But the dragon, she's the total opposite. All right, give me the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 15. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 15. Come on. A continual dropping in a very rainy day. All right, so it says a continual dropping in a very rainy day. Let's say you got off work early, you got your favorite meal, but now it's no longer sunny weather outside. You wanted to kick it out on the, um, out on the deck. Now it's a stormy day. You're sitting by the window. And one raindrop that's falling in front of your window just keeps going like this. It keeps going. That's annoying. Mm. That's a huge annoyance. Like, why is this raindrop? Why this one got to be right here? Right. All right, read that again. A continual dropping in a very rainy day. Come on. And a contentious woman. And a what? A contentious woman uh -huh. are alike. Are alike, meaning you are annoying. That dragon is annoying. Read. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind. So if you hide her, you can, you can hide a hurricane. <laughs> a category five. Read. And the ointment of his right hand, uh -huh. which beweareth itself. Which beweareth itself, meaning what? You can um, hide the odor. You can't. You cannot hide the wind, and you can't hide the odor of that contentious woman. It's impossible to hide it. Everybody can see it. All right. Uh, give me the book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 23. The book of Sirach, chapter 26, and verse 23. Come on. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. So although... That dragon at home may be sucking you dry, taking out all of the courage you have. You must understand that a wicked woman is given to a wicked man. Read that again. 
a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Come on. But a godly woman is given to him that feareth God. So you got to understand that thing, brothers out there. Today's topic is how to tame your dragon. So you need to realize, first and foremost, it starts with you. Right. All right. Give me the book of Sirach, chapter 11, verse 28. Watch book, this. The book of Sirach, chapter 11, and verse 28. Come on. Judge none blessed before his death. For a man shall be known in his children. Right. The scripture says, judge none before his death. A man may be known in his children. Meaning what? We will know what you're about by the behavior of your children. But watch this. Let's take it up a notch. Give me the book of Sirach chapter 40, verse 19. So it said, a man may be known by his children. So don't judge him while he's living. Let's see how his children pan out. One step above that. Watch this. The book of Sirach, chapter 40 and verse 19. Come on. Children and the building of a city continue a man's name. Right, a continue a man's name. We're going to know what he's really about. But watch this. But a blameless wife. A what? A blameless wife. Come on. Is counted above them both. You see that thing? Your wife, the way she carries herself, what everybody sees is counted above that thing. Meaning what? If you can't get your wife into subjection, meaning what? You wasn't really about anything to begin with. Mm. They don't like that. They didn't like that. No All right, so now we're going to jump into the class. All right, how to train, I'm sorry, how to tame, how to tame your dragon. All right, All right. give me the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 10, verse 33. Because remember, it starts with you brothers, okay? Read this. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 10 and verse 33. Come on. And he said unto me, stand up manfully. Do what? Stand up manfully. All right, so the angel was talking to um, Ezra's right here. He said, you got to stand up manfully. Most I can't deal with you if you feeble, fearful. Second guessing. Read that again. And he said unto me, stand up manfully, uh -huh. and I will advise thee. And he will advise thee. Meaning what, brothers? If you want to learn how to deal with that dragon at the house, you got to stop being so damn weak. Right. You got to stand up and guide your house. That's step number one. All right, from there, let's go to Sirach 25 and 25. The book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 25. Watch this. Give the water no passage. Give the water what? No passage. Uh-huh. Neither a wicked woman liberty to gad abroad. It's time to put your foot down. That's what the Bible's saying right there. Now, go back to uh, 2 Ezra 10, 33. There's a point I wanted to make right there. Watch this. 2 Ezra 10 and verse 33. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. Meaning what? You got to stand up manfully. If you want to tame a real a dog, right, mm. uh, actual dog, you can't tame the dog being be going like this. I need you to, oh, snap. You're, you're scared when right. the dog bites at you or tries to swipe at you. They can smell fear. Right. Guess what? A dragon can smell fear as well. Mm. Because if you don't believe that you're the man of the house, neither is your dragon. I said something right there. All right, go to the next scripture. Go to the next scripture. The book of Genesis, chapter 18 and verse 19. Watch this. For I know him that he will command his children. Who's him? It's talking about the forefather uh, Abraham right there. Read it again. For I know him that he will command his children uh -huh. and his household after him. And his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. Meaning what? That's somebody that when the Mosai called, he hearkened. Meaning what? He was dwelling in the land. He immediately got up and followed God. That's the same way you have to be. And by you hearkening to what God is telling us men to do, guess who's going to fall in line? The women and the children, okay? It ain't going to just be one occurrence. No, you got to keep practicing that thing. You got to keep listening to the Most High. You got to keep abiding in these commandments. Never give up. Don't waver, all right, from there. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter. I want you to start at uh, verse 12. Watch this. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 12. Because a lot of you out there, y'all have this scripture confused. You don't fully understand what this is saying. Watch this. Verse 12. Uh -huh. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife. And so, brothers, if you have a wife, read. That believeth not. Believe, she doesn't believe, like your dragon at home, read. And she be pleased to dwell with him. And she be pleased to dwell with him, meaning... She must keep the Sabbath. Right. She can't be cooking bacon. Okay. Uh, she's got to wear fringes and a board in blue. She got to cover her uh, head when the scriptures come out. She got to keep the new moons, the Passover. A lot of y'all think pleased to dwell with is, hey, 
she ain't causing a, you know, that much of a ruckus. And, you know, we may have our arguments, but, you know, she respect what I do. Mm. That's not what it's talking about. It. Please to dwell with me. She keeps the commandments just like you do. Read it again. But to the rest I speak I, uh -huh. not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not. If any brother have a wife that believeth not. Uh -huh. And she be pleased to dwell with him. Come, come on. Let him not put her away. Let her not put her away. You got to deal with that sister. Okay. And you got to continue to teach her. Give me the book of Sirach chapter 9 verse 2. Sirach Ecclesiasticus chapter 9 verse 2. The book of Sirach, chapter 9 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Give not thy soul unto a woman. Never give thy soul to a woman. Don't give your soul unto a woman. And a lot of y'all brothers have already done that. So now you got to reverse all the, the foolishness that you've done. What do I mean by, by that? I, it means by do not cater to her. Then the uh, Destiny's Child, make it, they made it. You don't know about it. I know you, you don't be uh, hip on game. But Destiny's Child made a song called Let Me Cater to You. That's how it's supposed mm. to be. It ain't supposed to be the man catering to the woman. All right? Uh, from there, give me the book of Sirach 33. I want uh, verse 19. I want you to jump down to 22. Watch this. Sirach 33, 19. Read this. The book of Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 19. Uh -huh. Give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, power over thee. You see that? Do not give these people power over thee. Because if you do that... They're going to take advantage, and that's going to be your demise. And that's what, that's what a lot of brothers' demise is. And we see it at the Sabbath day. When your wife is ready to go, we know it because you go running. Thanks. All right? <laughs> Read it again. Give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, power over thee Come on. while thou livest. While thou livest, that means never do it. So if you've done that out there, brothers, it's time to... Uh, uh, uncover what you've done. Yes. Start all over, okay? Uh, from there, jump down to verse 22. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. In all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. Keep the preeminence. There's no way you can be a leader if your subjects think that they run the house. It's impossible. Read that part again. In all thy works, keep to thyself mm -hmm. the preeminence. Leave not a stain in thine honor. Leave not a stain in thine honor. You're going to be known as, that's the brother who couldn't control his wife. Damn. That's the brother whose kids uh, was punking him or running all over him. Okay? Uh, from there, let's go to the book of um, 2 Ezra chapter 14, and I want verses, ten, start at 10 and read down to 13. The book of 2 Ezra chapter 14 and verse 10. Watch this. For the world hath lost his youth. For the world has lost his youth. We're living in, in those times really right now. Um, this is during the time of Ezra. All right. And even at that time, it was, you know, it was getting close to the end. All right. But we're really living in those days right now. Watch this. And the times begin to wax old. The times begin to wax old. Read. For the world is divided into 12 parts mm -hmm. and the 10 parts of it are gone already. Meaning what? It's just a timeline of how much time we have until the coming of Messiah. Read. And half of a 10th part. And there remaineth that which is after the half of the tenth part. Come on, that's how much time is left. Watch this. Now therefore, uh -huh. set thine house in order. It says set thine house in order. We don't have a lot of time left. All right? So, you know, brothers come in, oh, I'm working on it. I'm, are you really working on it? Mm. Day in and day out. About, it'd be three years. Your wife still ain't coming to the Sabbath? Come on, brother. Are you really working on it? Read that again. Now therefore, set thine house in in order. Set thine house in order. Read. And reprove thy people. And reprove thy people. How you expect to teach somebody out on the streets, but you yourself, you can't even set a woman in order. That's crazy. How you supposed to deal with men when you can't even teach your wife? Okay, brothers. Uh, drop that. Give me um, 1 Corinthians 7. All right, 7 and 29. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7 and verse 29. Watch this. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. There you go. There you go. Brothers, the time is short, meaning you got to get your house in order because there's a lot of work to do. But y'all, brothers, you behind the eight ball because you can't even go out and do, do the work because you got to tend to your wife all the damn time. Give me a Sirach 4 and 30. Watch this. The book of Sirach, chapter 4 and verse 30. Uh -huh. Be not as a lion in thine house. 
for a frantic among thy servants. Now, the Bible says, be not as a lion in a house. Because a lot of brothers, they could take those scriptures and be like, hey, there ain't no time. I'm going to cuss out. I'm going mm. to do this. No, 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 no. That's not what the Bible's talking about. It's talking about don't fake the funk. Because there's a lot of brothers out there who are about lip service. They say they're doing this, say they're doing that. But the most High knows your heart. But the scripture is telling you, hey, focus on the things that matter, okay? Your, your wife and your children. Get your house right, and then you can go out and teach the scriptures. But read it again. Be not as a lion in thine house. Meaning what? Don't now be on level 10 all the time. As soon as you come home, why the dishes ain't done? Why, why this ain't done? Duh, don't be like that, all right? You still got to deal with your wife according to knowledge. I right, read it all the way through. Verse 30, be not as a lion in thine house, uh -huh. nor frantic among thy servants. Nor frantic among thy servants. First Peter 3, 7. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Because I mentioned it, now we're going to go to it. Watch this. The book of First Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Uh -huh. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. So it says we have to dwell with our wives according to knowledge. Read. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. It didn't say bow down on your knees, bow down on your knees and worship your wife. No, no, no. It says give honor to your wife, understanding that she's weaker than you. Meaning what? You have to love her according to the scriptures. That's all it's saying. First Timothy 5 and 22, for you brothers who suffer with, uh, from rage, all right? Watch this. The book of First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 22. Uh -huh. Lay hands subtly on no man. The Bible says don't put your hands on nobody. It don't matter how upset you get. The Bible says, do, do what? Lay hands suddenly on no man. Come on. Neither be partaker of other men's sins. Neither be partaker of other men's sins, all right? <clears throat> um, give me 1 Peter 3, 9. Because a lot of times, you know, with dragons, they could uh, set a trap for you. Ooh. They'll say something like a trigger word, and they know that that's going to uh, enrage you. The scripture said, don't, don't be a partaker of other men's sins. If that's the way she want to roll, how about you show... That you a man of God, and you got some control over your spirit. Uh, give me that, uh, 1 Peter 3, 9. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, and verse 9. Come on. Not rendering evil for evil. Don't render evil for evil, all right? If, that, if she want to say something nasty, so what? You the bigger man. You understand the scripture. She don't. All right? Show, show your wisdom and deal with her according to knowledge. Read. Or railing for railing. Don't be going word for word, especially with a woman. Mm. That shows how weak you really are. If you arguing with a woman, something wrong with you, brother. All right? I'm, I know I'm talking to somebody out there. Read it again. Not rendering evil for evil. Come on. Or railing for railing. Or railing for railing. That's going word for word. Does it on that? Uh, but cr contrawise, blessing. Blessing. If she want to curse you, man, come with a scripture. Show that that's not the behavior that she should be rolling in, according mm. to the scriptures. All right? 1 Corinthians 6. We almost done. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6 and verse 7. Watch this. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you. All right, so if y'all have a disagreement, if there's a fault among you, come on. Because ye go to law one with another. Uh-huh. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why don't you take wrong? Let's just say um, it had something to do with taking out the garbage or cleaning the other house. Stupid, petty arguments that happen in marriage, right? Or disagreements that happen in marriage. How about you just be like, all right. All right, okay, I did it. That's right. Or, or, that's, or that's the situation. Who really cares? Think about it. Aren't you on the same team? <laughs> Nobody wins. That's the thing about it, Israel. If you are married and you worried about who getting the last word, you worried about who going to win the argument, you are, are an idiot. When you are married, that means you are one flesh. It means you are on the same team. So who cares who gets the last word? Right. Read that all the way through. Now, therefore, there is a utterly a fault among you. Watch this. Because ye go to law one with another. Uh -huh. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? What's the harm in that, man? Who cares? Just succumb to it so y'all can uh, seek peace, like it says in Peter, and get through the situation. Right. All right, give me Colossians 3.18. The book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 18. Watch this. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands uh -huh. as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Don't be bitter against them. That's for the weak brothers who don't want to move on. They want to hold on to everything your dragon did wrong. Because sometimes the sisters actually be trying. But you holding on to nonsense, now you're teaching her an evil lesson. Okay, so you got to let that thing go. 
All right, last scripture, Ecclesiastes 9 and 9. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9 and verse 9. Come on. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of of thy vanity. Mm -hmm. That's a commandment right there, man. So if, hey, if she's showing signs of repentance, you better not be hindering her. Because understand, the reason, the reason why she is the way she is is because of you first and foremost. So all of you brothers out there who are living with a dragon, look yourself in the mirror first and foremost. Follow these guidelines on how to train her and then live joyfully with your wife, all right? That's right. So that's how you tame your dragon according to the scriptures. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.